equality, justice, freedom. These were the cries America heard in the mid-20th century as the civil rights movement captivated our hearts and minds. A key victory in this campaign came on May 17, 1954, when the Supreme Court's ruling on Brown v. Board of Education declared that separate but equal schools were inherently unequal and thus unconstitutional. For citizens of Baltimore, Maryland, however, the Brown v. Board ruling was but another step in a desegregation process that had started two years prior with the city school board's vote to admit gifted black students to the elite A course at all-white Baltimore Polytechnic Institute. The integration of Polytechnic High School proved a decisive turn in the history of race and education in Baltimore, as it demonstrated black and white students' ability to work effectively alongside one another, motivated citizens to sue for the integration of two more of the city's specialized schools, and contributed to the ease with which the school board immediately adopted a sweeping desegregation policy following Brown. Baltimore City Code mandated racial segregation in its public school system. As in most southern cities, though, segregation resulted in unequal black schools. A comprehensive assessment of the city's schools in 1921 revealed lacking facilities for black pupils. The report advised the school board to immediately abandon and replace 12 of the 28 black schools. Through subsequent decades, however, many of these condemned schools remained open, in fact, the newest facilities allotted to the black school system were often not new at all, but rather former white schools. A similar report conducted in 1952 documented that black pupils often had to attend school in rotating shifts due to overcrowding. With decrepit facilities and scarce materials, black students were reminded of their second-class status in the city each morning they entered school. By 1950, Baltimore's civil rights groups transitioned from a campaign of school equalization to one of integration if inequality was present. The easiest place to start was at the Baltimore Polytechnic Institute. At this high school, gifted white students could enroll in the nationally ranked four-year pre-engineering curriculum known as the A course. For black students, no such specialized curriculum existed. To find the city's best black students to challenge Polly's racial entrance barrier, a handful of Baltimorean activist groups, anchored by the Urban League and the NAACP, formed the Coordinating Committee on Polytechnic Admissions. Fifteen of us were approached at various middle schools across Baltimore City, and on the recommendation of teachers and faculty members at that school, we were selected to enter Polly in 1952. We had a general meeting at Urban League under the guidance of Furman Templeton and the purpose of that meeting was to really tell us about the poly experience and the importance of doing this uh, in terms of our education and those that would follow us. By the school board's July 12th meeting, 16 boys had applied to the A course, 10 of whom were judged fully qualified. Caught in uncharted territory, the school board delayed further discussion of the matter until they received a legal opinion from the city solicitor and investigated the possibility of an A course at one of the city's black high schools. Although Superintendent William Lamell reported that the Poly A course could in fact be duplicated at all black Douglas High for a future fee of $78,000, the school board was urged by both city solicitor Thomas Bittison and Maryland Governor Theodore McKeldin to hear the Poly case at a September meeting. On September 2, 1952, an audience so large that it spilled into the hallways listened to the arguments for and against the integration of Polly during a special Baltimore City School Board meeting. Superintendent Lamell expressed his belief that a Douglas A course could be made equivalent in terms of faculty, curriculum, and equipment, but he seriously doubted that graduates of the new program would gain the same recognition as Polly graduates when it came to job seeking or college admission. Speaking last on behalf of the NAACP, Thurgood Marshall summarized testimonies from leading psychologists and sociologists that described how segregation harmed black children and prevented them from a truly equal education. Concluding a four-hour meeting, the board voted 5-3 to three in favor of integration and made Polly's A course the first public high school program south of the Mason-Dixon line to end segregation. On September 8, 1952, 
13 black freshmen and two sophomores walked through Polytechnic's doors to start the new school year without any backlash from the Baltimore citizenry or Poly's white school body. We all entered Poly on September of 1952 and were then integrated really into the student body. It was a good experience for me and I think generally speaking, a good experience for the rest of us. The faculty at Poly, the administration were very helpful in assisting us in our education. We not only were part of the academic life of Poly, we played sports, we were in clubs, and we were really as much a part of that school as any of the students there. It was a testament to the faculty's support and the boys' will to succeed then that despite their disadvantage of coming from a clearly unequal black school system, four of the 13 original black students in the class of 1956 graduated the A course, a passing rate similar to that of the class overall. The integration at Poly thus achieved what had long been considered impossible. White and black students at Poly learned and bonded with one another, and black students competed in one of the most challenging programs our country offered. The successful integration of Poly motivated the city's civil rights groups to use a similar strategy in trying to integrate two more all-white specialized high schools, Western and Mergenthaler. Western, the city's only all-girls option, offered a similar program to Poly's A course to which there was no equivalent for black girls. The just-established Mergenthaler Vocational High School offered a complete printing program, while all black high schools offered only certain printing courses. The argument was made by the Urban League, the NAACP, and other groups that the school system should be committed to providing equal programs if the separate programs. And the argument they made about Poly was there was no equal separate program. And the school system agreed. And that set a precedent. And then the NAACP and the Urban League and other civil rights groups said, therefore, you need to follow the same principle at Western High School and at Mergenthaler Vocational High School. Despite the ruling in Brown v. Board, Maryland State Board of Education decided to continue a segregated school policy until the Supreme Court issued a specific plan and deadline for desegregation. However, Baltimore School Board, which ran the city's schools autonomously, decided not to follow the state's decision. Instead, they opened schools in the fall of 1954 with a new free choice policy that allowed students of any race to attend any city school, an action that made Baltimore City the first school district in the entire South to desegregate following Brown. No other case better prepared the Baltimore School Board for this bold move than Polly in 1952. This, this was the occasion in which the city, the one time the city wrestled with the separate but equal policy, and they moved past it. They said, we discovered as a school board, we're in favor of ending segregation. So when the Supreme Court came down with this decision in May 1954, in some sense the city had already discussed the issue. The school board was clear that this is what they wanted to do. And I think the Poly decision and that discussion at that time made it easy for the school board to move ahead in 1954 and very quickly after the court decision and the uh, segregation of city schools. The integration of Polly's A course was a quiet turning point in the history of school desegregation. Precipitated by decades of educational inequality on the basis of race, the integration marked a change in priority from school equalization to school integration for Baltimore's prominent civil rights groups. Furthermore, the integration transformed the city's educational climate as it inspired citizens to use a similar tactic in trying to integrate Western and Mergenthaler high schools and facilitated the city school board's adoption of a free choice desegregation policy in 1954. An extreme situation has been created in Little Rock. And it is in contrast to the violent southern desegregation process that Polytechnic reveals itself as a glimmer of peaceful collaboration between whites and blacks in an otherwise dark period of our national history. Oh,